Our world is constantly evolving. As time moves forward, things change, which is why it's important to stay informed. Throughout the year, there are dozens of professionals that share their expertise with the community through lectures sponsored by local government agencies and area not-for-profits. And each month, we'll feature one of these visiting professors as they discuss the latest current events and trends. So grab a notebook and pull up a chair because the lecture hall is about to begin. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the nine tech tools that will optimize your life. I am Matthew R. Stover. I'm here at the beautiful Oxbow Eco Center, and I'm very happy to, I'm very happy to be presenting this wonderful topic. Now, who am I? I am Matthew R. Stover. I am a computer geek extraordinaire. I love technology, and I love telling people about technology that improves their life. My philosophy is that technology should be used to make your life easier, not frustrating, uh, overwhelming, and uh, distracting. Uh, two aspects of what I do in my consulting business, uh, I do technology efficiency and technology education. <clears throat> uh, technology efficiency is what I do. I streamline the operations of small businesses and even residents to uh, improve their life. I use uh, computer applications, uh, hardware, software, or web services to uh, improve their life. One great example is I just recently saved a nonprofit organization in St. Lucie County about $260 a month on their telephone bill. Now, that's over $3,000 a year that that nonprofit organization can use on services that really make a difference uh, in their nonprofit operations. Uh, I also help people uh, do computer repair, I, I install hard drives, I help people use their smartphones, I show them how to transfer photos to their computers from their digital camera, I also help them save on their cable bill, uh, many other things. There is a, on the back of your handout, there is just a brief uh, description of some of the things that I do. Uh, please take some time to take a look at uh, the efficiency services that I provide. And I also provide education, one-on-one -on -one instruction, and presentations at community centers like here at the Oxbow Eco Center. One-on-one uh, -on -one instruction, I'll help you use uh, a lot of the common computer applications that you have at home uh, and on your phone. And again, custom computer bills, repair, some graphic design. So what are tech tools? Uh, tech tools... Uh, I split them into three categories, hardware, software, and web services. Hardware is just any machine wiring, uh, machinery, physical components of a computer or an electronic system. Software uh, is operating information or programs uh, <clears throat> that uh, would be used by a computing system. And web services are applications that are hosted on the internet that you can access pretty much wherever there's an internet connection. So today we're gonna to be covering, very simple, the nine tech tools that I feel that can make your life easier or better, maybe save you some money. And then at the end of the uh, presentation, I'll entertain some questions pretty much about anything that you have about technology, okay? So let's get started. The first number one tech tool that I think anyone should have is a smartphone. And I have four smartphones. That, can anyone name the four smartphones that I have up here by any chance? IPhone. Where, where's the iPhone? The iPhone. The okay. What's the next one? The second one is Android. Android. Third one Blackberry. is Blackberry. Blackberry. And the Windows phone, right? Oh, that's correct. The Windows phones. <laughs> these, are the four these are the four major flavors of smartphones that are out there. Uh, the most popular or around the most popular device is the iPhone uh, operating in iOS, which is an operating system on the iPhone. And then the second most popular is probably Android devices, and that is the Samsung Galaxy S3. And then BlackBerry is obviously used worldwide and the Windows phone developed by Microsoft. So what is a smartphone and what can it do for you? A smartphone is a device that has computer-like 
functions uh, applied on a, a, a phone, on a, on a communication device. So you have, com have computer-like functions on uh, a phone. I just call it the Swiss Army, knife, Swiss Army knife of the digital world. I think it can do all sorts of things. Obviously, it can make a phone call, and then it can obviously text, you know, if you want to send a text message. And then you have an address book. That's, those three features are pretty common on any phone that you get. Um, but the smartphone goes a lot further than that. Internet browser, you can browse the internet. You can take pictures, and now smartphones, the cameras on smartphones are really approaching the point and shoot cameras. And I would say in three to five years, uh, smartphones will be able to take just as good a quality as point and shoot. I don't even have a point and shoot camera because it's just far easier for me to take my smartphone out and take pictures with my smartphone. You can also watch videos, videos that you download to your smartphone or the ones that you take with your smartphone, or you can watch videos from the web like YouTube. You can also send email, listen to music. I listen to music all the time on my smartphone. In fact, that's the number one thing I use my smartphone for. Reading books. I have actually read a few books on my smartphone. GPS, you can find wherever you need to go. Video chatting with Skype. Uh, you can track your finances and budget and view your bank account right on your smartphone. You can even tune a guitar on your smartphone. I've used it for a flashlight, great use for it. Stopwatch, timer, alarm clock, clock, great, and so much more. Now, making phone calls on your smartphone is actually the fifth, it's the fifth thing that people use their smartphone. Can you guess the top four reasons why people use their smartphones? That's actually not in the top five. That's actually number one. How about two, three, and four? Anybody have, have a... No. Music is number three. Email. Nope. Social media. Number two. And what's the fourth most... Pictures? Games. So the top five, internet browsing, social media, music, games, and then we get to making phone calls. So I have a, <laughs> sometimes people use their smartphones a little too much and it gives them too much information. So I have a fun little video I want to show you that, uh, that shows that. Hey, it's going to rain today. Better grab an umbrella. Good call, smartphone. Oh, it's also your mom's birthday. Oh man, you're right. Thanks, smartphone. You're so smart. Here's a great place to eat. Well, I am pretty hungry. Thanks again, smartphone. You're the smartest smartphone ever. Yeah, I'm pretty smart. Hey, you know that thing is like 1,200 calories, right? Yeah, it's fine. Uh, uh, thanks for the heads up, though. I appreciate it. Uh, you know, I just really felt like a burger. All right. Okay. That's what you're wearing? Yeah, why? What? I like this sweater. Oh, yeah, I'm sure you do. Hey, don't forget to pick up Rudy and Theo. Okay, Mr. Uxtable? <sighs> This movie blows. The son kills the dad at the end. Lame. Come on, man. I... P.S. Your date's already in a relationship. What? Spelled that wrong. You're late. You're lost. You're fat. Damn it! All right, you know what? That's enough. I'm sick of you. <laughs> wait, wait. Sure, I, I may be obnoxious, but, but I tell it like it is. You can always trust me to tell you the truth. <sighs> you know, you're right, smartphone. It, it's just... Could you, could you tone it down a little? Absolutely. So you're not mad anymore? No, I, I guess not. Good, you look stupid when you're mad. I snapped a pic. Check it out! I hate you! You <laughs> throw like a girl! <laughs> hey, looks like rain. Better grab an umbrella. Hey, thanks, smartphone! So the number... So the number two use... Uh, the number two tech tool that I, I love sometimes it's actually overlooked, it's the all-in-one printer. The all-in-one printer is something pretty normal. And the biggest thing about an all-in-one printer is why have four devices, we can only have one. Four devices means more expensive, much more maintenance, and it's uh, just much more difficult. You gotta find the space to keep up with all those devices. So, there are four separate devices. You can get a 
copier, a scanner, a fax machine, and a printer all in one device. Now they're shipping that they're wireless. So you can place it anywhere in the house and you don't have to be tied to your computer. So it's very, very convenient. And now they also can sync to your smartphone. So uh, you can use an all-in-one printer to sync to your smartphone, can be wireless, and can also help you go paperless. And I love the scanner feature on, uh, on all-in-one printers because uh, I'm in the midst of going fully paperless so I can declutter in my house and save a tree while I'm at it, right? And the third tech tool that I love, it's another piece of hardware, it's the crock pot. This is a tool that should be used in any family's kitchen. And in fact, I brought my smart, uh, I, I brought my crock pot here and uh, please feel free to help yourself to uh, delicious barbecue meatballs, but it's so easy to use. But what is a crock pot? A crock pot is just an electric cooking pot that cooks food over time and it's perfect for soups and stews. And it's great because you just set it and forget it. So normally if you were to cook a dinner at home, you come home from a long day of work and then you got to pull out a pot because you want to do green beans and you got to chop up the green beans and throw them in there. And then you pull out another pot because you want to make some, uh, let's say, some roasted potatoes. You got to put that in the oven or something like that. And then you got to make rice. And then you have to pull out the chicken and you have to make chicken. And then you have all these pots at the end of the night and you got to wash them all and it takes a long time. With a crock pot, you just chop up everything, put the chicken, put the meat in there, put the potatoes, put the carrots, you know, put something to marinate it in, press on and you're done. You come home after work, you eat dinner, and when you're done with dinner, you have to just clean one pot. That is great for a young family, and both parents are working. My favorite recipes, I love slow cooker whole chicken, like a rotisserie chicken, uh, with potatoes, carrots, onions, and all that other good stuff. Pot roast is great. Chili is absolutely wonderful in a slow cooker. Um, shredded barbecue chicken for sandwiches, also wonderful. Another great tech tool that I love is called the Roku. The Roku is uh, what we call a media streaming player. I set this device up a good bit for families and couples that want to save money on their cable bill. And we'll just get into what a Roku is all about. A Roku is what we call a media streaming device. And before I can get into exactly the Roku itself, I gotta explain what media streaming is. Content providers and media companies like NBC and ABC are beginning to transmit their shows over the internet. Because a lot of people are moving towards the internet with their tablets and their smartphones. They wanna be able to watch their favorite television shows regardless of their location. So media streaming is the act of a media company transmitting their shows and their entertainment over the internet. That's what we call as media streaming. Now the most popular media streaming software, and the most, it's called Hulu. Hulu uh, streams some of the most popular uh, media companies in their shows through their software. You can download Hulu, go to Hulu.com and download Hulu Desktop. You can watch it right there in your browser. And it's free because it's ad supported. And it's, it's, it's great if you do not want to pay for cable. Now for $7.99 a month, you can upgrade to Hulu Plus and you can watch current TV shows like my favorite is uh, uh, The Daily Show with Jon Stewart, a lot of Comedy Central. And you can watch those shows uh, as they become available and you can more or less get rid of your cable if you would like. That's Hulu Plus. Another popular media streaming uh, service is called Netflix. Obviously Netflix is known for, you know, you can mail DVDs back and forth and get some of the most common uh, movies, but now they're also streaming television shows and movies through their website. And another one is Amazon also has, has a similar service uh, of streaming uh, wonderful TV shows as well. Now what a Roku does, a Roku is a device that you hook up to your 
television and it's wireless or wired and it goes to your internet and pretty much it brings in all this media content through that device and you can go to your television. Now you don't have to hook a computer up to your television. It's just a very, it's a very small device, very small device, and you put it there. So not only do you get the popular um, media companies like NBC, ABC, and all the big ones, you also get a lot of lesser known content providers like TED, College Humor, and Vice. Now these media companies only exist on the internet, and they do not exist on over the air, which is great because TED, I don't, you guys, do you know what TED is? TED is, TED is, a, 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 it's 20, 25 minute presentations presented by the world's greatest thinkers, the world's greatest entertainers, uh, talking about very, very inter interesting subjects. Um, a good example is, you know, Prime Minister, former Prime Minister Gordon Brown talking about how Twitter has shaped politics around the world. Uh, I would, I suggest that you t check it out, it's, it's, it's impressive. College humor is just a Comedy Central kind of uh, uh, kind of media company that's geared towards college students. Again, you can only access it online. And Vice is a news journal uh, media provider that goes to all of the craziest parts of the world, and uh, they report on things that you don't see on CNN. Um, very, very, very interesting. It's a little graphic and disturbing, but. Nevertheless, you will never see Anderson Cooper on some parts of the world that Vice is, that's for sure. And then there are other media streamers that you can buy uh, in the stores. There's the Sony N200, the Boxy Box, uh, Netgear has a device, and a lot of other uh, manufacturers have uh, media and streaming devices. Okay, so that ends the hardware portion of this presentation of the nine tech tools. And now we're gonna get into web services. Again, web services are essentially applications that are accessed through the internet. So you have to have an internet connection to access web services. Google Calendar is by far one of the most, it's a very popular web service that's used in a variety of applications. <clears throat> so, if you're familiar with regular calendar apps, if you have Outlook, uh, you can have Outlook on your computer. It usually comes on a lot of office computers. But the problem with Outlook and the Outlook calendar is that that calendar is only on that one computer. And sometimes you can share the calendars with other people, but a lot of times you have to have Outlook calendar in order to do that. Google Calendar gets rid of that. So the basics of Google Calendar, again, you go to google.com slash calendar, and it looks very similar to a regular Outlook calendar or any other calendar uh, applications. First of all, it's free, like many of the Google services, it's very free. Uh, the second thing, uh, it's easy, you just track and keep all of your appointments. I have a meeting today at two o'clock, and it shows right up there, no big deal. It also has a to-do list, so if you have to-do tasks, it'll help you out with that. And again, it's accessible by internet browser. You can use it on many smartphones. You can use it on your tablet. Anything that has an internet connection, you can get to your Google Calendar. Let's say you are in Miami, Florida. You just go open up an internet browser like Internet Explorer or Firefox, go to the website, log in, there's your calendar. So those are more or less the basic features. Some of the best features though, the ability to share a calendar, and that is impressive, to share a calendar. Later I'm gonna give you an example of how I share calendars between my wife and I. But let's say you have a calendar that you want your spouse to see, or you want your parents to see, you can create a calendar and you can share it with them so they'll see all of your appointments and they know what you have going on if they care to look at that. <clears throat> or you can use it in your workplace environment so you can share your calendar with all your uh, peers and colleagues so they'll know if you're in a meeting or not. So it's a great, great web service, great feature. And then you can also send invitation and track RSVP. So you're having a party at four o'clock and you can email invitations out to everybody 
and they uh, can respond back if they're going to come, and you can see who's coming. Great feature. Another great feature is customized reminders. If you leave your, your phone number, your cell phone, on attach it to your Google account, you can text message yourself a reminder about an application, uh, about an appointment. So, uh, and then you can put multiple reminders. So for instance, let's say you have a meeting at two o'clock. You can set it up in Google Calendar that 90 minutes before that meeting, you'll be sent a text message to remind you of that meeting. And then you can do a 90 minute, 60 minute, and a 30 minute, 30 minute reminder. And it can be used with either a smartphone, obviously, or what we call a feature phone, which is a non-smartphone. Some people call it a dumb phone, but it's still a phone nonetheless. And another great service of Google Calendar that I didn't put on here is location-based use. So you can put the location there, and if you pull it up on your smartphone, your smartphone will read the GPS and will direct you to the location. And if we have just a quick moment, I just want to quickly demo it to you guys, if that's all right. I'll just show you how it quickly works. And we will... If you look up here, it says calendar. And we're going to log into my wife's account. <laughs> Let's make sure we don't stay signed in. Okay, so here we are. Let's look at the month view. So, this is my wife's calendar. Obviously, it looks like a regular calendar that you see on Outlook Calendar or anything else. But here's something that's interesting. If we come over here, you'll notice that there are other calendars. Here, here are her calendars. Evelyn Stover, that's my wife, Evelyn. But she'll, you'll notice that there's Matthew's private calendar, which is me, Matthew's public calendar, and this is her mother's calendar. So if you were to highlight my calendar, you'll see that all of my appointments come up. So you see everything, you see my presentation and all this other stuff. It's really neat. Let's say we were to just quickly add an appointment. And here we go. We have, you can add your event there at the time that you start. Here's the where part right here. So that where part is the location. That's what your, your phone will read. Uh, there's a Google Hangout, but I can talk about that some other time. Put all your description here. You can decide what calendar it goes into. And here are the reminders right here, which is really, really interesting. So there's a reminder that says pop-up. So that if you're just logged onto Google Calendar, because a lot of people go into their office and immediately they'll open up Google Calendar, pops up and reminds you. Here's the SMS function. SMS yourself 30 minutes, and you can keep on adding reminders as you go along. It's, uh, it's absolutely wonderful, and, and that's pretty much how Google Calendar works. So I suggest that you play around with it. If you have a smartphone, uh, it's a great tool to use in your uh, business or your organization where you work, and it's also incredible to use uh, with your home life as well. So let's keep on moving. Here's another great tool that will help you communicate with other people about what needs to be done or what has to be done, and it's called Out of Milk. Now, who can guess what Out of Milk is about? Out of Milk is a to-do application it's also a shopping application. And there's another similar web service or app called Remember the Milk. And this is why it's really, really neat. This is why I really like it. I call it the 21st century honey-do list, <laughs> right? 
so there are three functions of it. Shopping lists, to-do lists, and then they have a pantry list. Now, here's the really neat thing about Out of Milk. It's another one of those applications that, let's say, I have the application on my phone, and my wife has the same application on her phone, but we're logged into the same account. So, we, every Sunday night, we come up with a shopping list. And we'll put you know, milk, and we'll put eggs, cheese, and everything like that. And we'll put where we need to buy them from, Publix, BJ's. So, when I go to the grocery store, I see the shopping list, and I'll mark things off the shopping list. So the next time my wife is at the grocery store, she'll see the things that I purchased, and she'll see what I crossed off. So the best feature is that it can be shared among multiple devices, and it also can be accessed the web and smartphone. So, I mean, it's very hard on your smartphone to type cheese and then you know, put it in. You can just go on the website and just type it all in, and it's great. Uh, and, and it's right there, simple, very easy to use. And another cool thing about it is you can essentially create one shopping list because when you strike it off, when you need it again, you can just hit another button and it just comes back up. So essentially you only put in one shopping list and it works very well. And here's some of the screenshots. I just wanted to show you the screenshots of Adam Milk. This is on the smartphone device. Over there, you see there's a shopping list, and there's a to-do list, and there's a pantry list. And then you can add how much quantity if you want. You know, you can edit it all right in this one. Uh, and then you can just easily add items. When you're ready to cross it off, you just tap it once, and you press done, and it strikes it out, and it puts it at the bottom of the list. And when you're ready to put it back up, you just hit it again and it just unstrikes itself or something like that. It's a great, great application. A lot of times we'll go into really large grocery stores like maybe like BJ's or something and we'll split up. And you know, my wife will say, you get all the grocery store stuff and I'll get all the toiletries and all that stuff. And we know exactly what each other gets. Very, very efficient, very efficient. So again, one of the common themes here, we're talking about sharing information, efficiently communicating with other parties so you know exactly what's being done. So in Google Calendar, we're finding out we know what someone is doing at a certain time. If I'm trying to call someone and they're busy and then I look on their Google Calendar and I see they have an appointment, I'll know. We're sharing this information very efficiently. Then this last one, out of note, we're sharing what needs to be done. So there's a to-do list, and it says something like, clean the walls in the bathroom. <laughs> My wife can check that. I haven't done that in two weeks. <laughs> and she <laughs> or, you know, uh, pack for the trip to Miami this week, and we can see exactly where we are on it. So very efficient communication. EBA, or Easy Envelope Budget Aid, it's another step into this efficient communication when it comes down to working with uh, your budget system. Now, EBA is based on a cash envelope budget system. But before I get to that, let's quickly talk about cash and debit cards, right? So this has probably happened to you before. With debit cards, you'll go to the gas station, you'll pump $45 worth of gas, and you use your debit card, and you're done. A lot of times that charge doesn't show up on your bank account until five, up to five days later. So you want to make sure, you know, you can always keep the receipts, but you want to make sure you're on top of your, actively on top of your finances. And sometimes the bank account and the debit card usage doesn't really do that that well. So some people use cash. A lot of times, you know, we're told that, you know, cash is one of the best methods of paying for things. And when you use a cash envelope budget system, you have certain envelopes that have cash in them. So you have an envelope that has the grocery cash. You have an envelope that has the gas cash. Then you have an envelope that says the eating out cash or the miscellaneous cash. So when you go to the grocery store, you essentially, you're pulling that envelope with that budgeted amount of money, let's say $200, and you're taking that to the grocery store, and 
you pay for your groceries with that kind of cash. It helps you really keep things very, very organized. So that's what EBA does, but it does it digitally. So let's say you have a $200 budget for your groceries and you have a $200 budget for your gas, per se, right? So you're able to set that amount in your easy envelope budget aid. And when you go pump your gas, right after you finish pumping your gas, you just press, I pump gas, you know, essentially I pump gas for $40, and it automatically deducts from your gas budget envelope. Now, the next time my wife goes out and gets gas, she'll pull up Eva and she'll notice, oh, there's only $160 left in gas. Now I know about this. And that's what EBA does. It helps you to communicate uh, where you are spending money so you can easily track it. So again, it can be shared among uh, couples. I have a couple screenshots of this. And it's very, 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 very simple to use. It's less than 10 seconds to input a transaction. And again, it's accessible on the website. So you can set the envelopes on your website and you can really use it. And here's some of the screenshots. I just want to quickly show you what we got. So here's the, how it looks on the web. So, you know, you, you sort of set your envelopes, $240 for groceries or whatever. And when you're out, you go to, let's say you go out to eat at a nice restaurant. And before you go out, it's like, man, how much money do I have to spend to go out to this restaurant? Oh. I have a $200 budget, I have $42.41 left in this envelope. So it's great for really keeping things organized, especially, especially if you share a bank account with your, your spouse. Uh, it really keeps you on track, and I, we've used that a lot. And it, it really covers us as to if we, we're going to go over or under our budgeted, uh, budgeted items. So it's like the cross between the cash envelope budget system and the old school checkbook system. You know, you had a checkbook, you write out a check, and then you record the expense right then and there. Which leads us to the eighth most useful tech tool, and that is Mint.com. Anyone heard of Mint.com? Have you heard of Quicken? And you know, you've used Quicken, you used to use probably Microsoft Money back in, essentially what Mint.com is a free version of Quicken online. It's very, it's very, very similar. It's very similar to Quicken. It's sort of like EBA, but a little bit more robust. Oh, let me play this. And I have a video for this so you guys can sort of get an understanding of what's going on. How do you keep track of your financial life? Statements. Spreadsheets? Scribbles? It's time for something better, something easier, something smarter. Mint is a free, easy way to manage your money that empowers you to take charge of your financial life. Get started with a simple one-time setup. Add your bank, credit card, home loan, and investment accounts. Mint quickly and securely pulls in the information and organizes it for you. That's it. No more bookkeeping. Mint keeps it all up to date. You can see all your accounts in one place, with one login, anywhere, anytime. Mint uses bank-level security and alerts you to any suspicious transactions so you can rest easy. Mint shows you where your money goes. Your expenses are automatically categorized so you can keep track of how much and where you're spending. With one click, you can create a budget based on your spending history, make adjustments, track your progress, and find ways to spend smarter. Mint reviews your financial picture and makes personalized recommendations on ways you can save. You get all the information you need to make smarter decisions and plan for the future. Mint, it's the best free way to manage your money. Sign up and get started with Mint in less than five minutes. So, that's Mint, right? 
So you can put all your information in one place. Now, they said mortgages on there, but now I think they also have auto loans. And then if you have a loan uh, just separate, it'll help you track uh, just a, a loan that, you, let's say you owe someone $2,000, like, like an individual person, it'll help you track that as well or something along those lines. Set savings goals, helps you achieve them. Uh, it's very secure with banking information. Now, some people do not like uh, submitting their bank information online regardless. Um, so that's the reason why I put this in here along with EBA, because EBA, I mean, it's extremely secure because you're not just giving out a lot of information. Here you are transmitting pretty sensitive information. But it's still very, very secure, very secure. Um, and it's very user-friendly. It helps you plan for savings. Uh, it helps you get, uh, achieve your goals. Again, accounts can be shared among multiple devices, and then it's obviously accessible via the web and a smartphone. Now, it is different from EBA, and it may not be for everyone. First of all, it's a security thing. The second thing is different from, it tracks the expenses as it hits the bank, meaning it's not going to track a pending expense. So, if you buy something on a Friday, you may think, according to what you're looking at on Mint, that you've already purchased something. I mean, you, that you have much more money in your bank account than you actually do, because Mint's not tracking the pending transactions. EBA, since you're inputting it right then and there, you know exactly how much money you have. So that's the reason why I wanted to make sure I put in Mint and EBA, because they're, they're, Mint by far is much more robust than planning, but it, it sort of lacks that one particular element to it. And so did Quicken and so did all those other ones. And the last uh, app, and this is my favorite actually. Have you ever heard of Evernote? Evernote? Evernote. It's a, it's, a, it's a really, really cool app. Again, I have another video for Evernote, so I'll just play the video. I think you'll uh, get an idea of it. Hi, welcome to Evernote. Evernote is a way to capture all your experiences and access them from anywhere. Type a note, store documents, record audio, capture a photograph, or any other moment you want to remember. Evernote saves and synchronizes your digital life across all your devices. No matter where you are, Evernote is with you. Use it to stay more organized. Plan your next trip. Design and manage a project. Clear your paper clutter. Capture a moment and always find what you need. Life is full of experiences and Evernote helps you capture, manage, and remember them all. So Evernote is essentially like having a notebook slash scrapbook with you wherever you go. And that's what makes it really neat. Now, when I first started using Evernote, I didn't think I would use it that much. I just thought it was probably something neat to have. But I find myself going to it at least two or three times a week because I'm working on stuff. I've developed a lot of this presentation on Evernote. So I'm gonna give you an example. Uh, in your current lives right now, are you working on, like, I don't know, remodeling anything? Do you have any big projects? What are you working on? I'm remodeling our house. You're remodeling your house. So this is how you use Evernote. Let's say you went to Home Depot, and you're walking around Home Depot, and you see something that you liked, that you wanted to remodel in your house. So what you do is you go to... Uh, let's say it's a backsplash in the kitchen. And you're like, man, I really love the design of this backsplash. I, I want to remember it, right? So you obviously you whip your phone out and you take a picture. Now this is where Evernote comes in. So you take a picture and you upload it to a notebook in your Evernote account. Now Evernote, you can have as many notebooks as you want, but this particular notebook is called House Remodel. So you have your house remodel notebook. So you upload that picture into your house remodel notebook and you say something like, saw this backsplash at Home Depot, really loved the color. 
So later, you can refer back to that particular uh, note that you save. Obviously, you can go on your, on your computer, you're browsing through your computer, and you happen to see a picture of a house that you love because you love the color in the living room. So on your computer, you clip that picture, just like you would clip out a picture in a newspaper, and you save that to the house remodel notebook on your, on your Evernote. And the opportunities are endless. You know, you, you are out and about, you're in the car, and you have an idea that you want to look at the recliners from a furniture store. So you record to yourself, look at the recliners of this furniture store. Again, you upload it to the house remodel notebook. So it's just this wonderful, wonderful application that you can use to help you organize your life, projects, and everything. It's also not just a must-have for project planning, but if you're a creative person like I am, and you have a lot of ideas coming up, and you want to capture all your ideas, Evernote is great for it. And then again, you can share your notes with friends or anybody. You can just send a link to them, and they can take a look at your Evernote. And they can also, uh, if you want, you can have them edit and make suggestions uh, by sharing your notes with them. Again, you remember everything. Right in wherever you are, it's accessible everywhere. And I really mean everywhere. Out of all the tech tools I have here, this is the web service that's on Android, iOS, BlackBerry, Windows Phone. It's online. There's a PC download you can use. There's a Mac download that you can download to your computer. And it syncs it everywhere you are. So that's very good, very good app. And then it also has these really neat third-party applications that uh, you can use, like uh, Evernote Clearly is the app that you can put onto your browser. And let's say you're reading CNN, and there's an article there that you don't have time to read right now, but you want to read later. You can clip it with Evernote Clearly, and let's say you're out and you're on the plane, and you want to read that article, you can just pull it up really quickly, and you can read the article. Great. It's a really, really cool app. And then also you can just clip photos online and everything like that. Uh, Sketch is uh, something that helps you uh, graphically point out uh, items and pictures. So you can draw an arrow to a fish that you caught, or you can draw an arrow to the color of a wall because you like the color of a wall. It's really, it's pretty cool. And then also it works, it helps you go paperless as well. This company called Shoebox, what they'll do, let's say you have photos or you have all sorts of uh, documents that you want to scan, you want to get out of your house, declutter your house. You send all those documents in a box over to Shoebox. They'll scan them and then they'll upload them to your Evernote account and they'll index them for you. So... You can have it all nice and organized in your Evernote. A lot of people use Evernote to go paperless because it helps them. Uh, it's very organized. You have notebooks and you have notes within notebooks and it works out very well. Um, so that's why Evernote's one of my favorite all-time apps. One of my favorite all-time apps. And that concludes my nine tech tools. I hope you found something interesting and hopefully it could make your life better. For more information about what I do, please visit my website at www.matthewrstover.com or you can call me, the phone number's there. Thank you very much. Thank you.